Hey ho, merry doll. Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today we have another slightly different model for you today. One of the more niche models, but as we are doing our quest to the ring bearer, we want to give you the option of painting alongside with us as we put all the scenarios out. We have Goldberry. Now we know we painted Tom Bombadil a little while ago, so he is already on the channel before the Fog of the Paradowns uh, scenario went up. We thought it was a lovely chance now to paint up the wonderful and majestic sculpt of Goldberry. An absolute classic metal sculpt which has stood the test of time and is still available in her old form today. This will be an exercise in painting a lot of white and really really light hues which will be different for us as we tend to use quite a lot of dark and natural colours so this will be a really good experience and a really good experiment in um, some of those lighter tones and really creating a really ethereal looking model on the tabletop. So once your model is uh, prepped and trimmed of any flash, mold line cleaned, assembled to the base, we then primed our gold brute with um, Citadel uh, Mechanica Standard Spray, as we thought the black was going to be too much and too dark for us to work off these lighter tones later on down the line. We guys hope you enjoyed today's video. Brush is ready guys, let's get painting. We're going to start with a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone and apply this as a base coat to the face, neckline and the hands. Now we're going to use a 50-50 mix of Steel Legion Drab and Iron Rack Skin and apply this as a base coat to all the hair. Taking good care to make sure we get in all the grooves and recesses, it's quite bushy and there's quite a lot to fill in and paint. And for the final base colour we're going to do at this stage, we use a three part mix of Baharoth Blue, Thousand Suns Blue and Warpstone Glow. And apply this as a base coat to the entirety of the dress. We want to apply this in a few thin coats to get a nice smooth coverage over all the fabric and material. This will give us a really nice almost ethereal blue for us to work off later on for the later layering and highlighting stages. Skin. We're going to work our progression through more lighter tones with some warmer shades to bring some warmth and colour back to the skin. To start off with, however, we're going to apply a layer over all the skin now with pure Cadian Flesh Tone. Give us a nice light base for the wash to work off in a minute. Now we're going to apply a targeted shade with right to the flesh shade, thin down quite a bit with some Lamy Medium and apply this as a wash all over the skin. Once it's dry, we're going to apply a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Kislev Flesh to Cadian Flesh Tone and apply this as an all over layer. Now we're going to start adding Pallid Witch Flesh to the previous Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh Mix. We're going to start off in an approximate 2 to 1 ratio of mix with the layer mix to Pallid Witch Flesh and just continue building up those highlights over the skin and fingers. Work on building this up with gradual increments of Pallid Witch Flesh added in until your mix is an approximate 2 to 1 split in favour of the Pallid Witch Flesh. At this point you're focusing on the uppermost raised details of facial detail and musculature across the body.
and then we can apply a tie together glaze now with right clean flesh shade thin down again with a significant amount of lamy and medium we're not looking at toning down we're just looking at tying together all the layers and highlights here and bring a little bit of warmth back to our skin once this is dry you can apply an optional targeted shade with caribou crimson just to the cheeks to bring a bit more rosy color through to her if you wish The lips were then carefully picked out with a thin line of Bugman's Glow. The eye recesses picked out with Abaddon Black. And the pupils painted in with two pinpoint dots of Pallet Witch Flesh either side. Hair. Again, we're going to be keeping the hair recipe fairly simple, relying on palette witch flesh on white scar with intermittent shades to do most of the work for us. To start off with, we're going to apply an all over wash to the hair with Agrax Earth Shade. We're going to get pulled nicely in all the grooves and all the recesses to give a nice sense of depth to this big bushy mane of glorious golden hair. We're now going to very painstakingly Go over all the hair now with a layer of Steel Lesion Drab and Iron Rack Skin, increasing the amount of Iron Rack Skin to an approximate 3 to 1 ratio with the Steel Lesion Drab. We're going to pick out all the main strands of hair here to give an initial sense of definition, which the dry brush stages can pick off with and really help enunciate later on down the line. Now we're going to start adding Pallet Witch Flesh to the previous Steel Lesion Iron Rack Skin Mix and start dry brushing this all over the hair, starting with a fairly heavy dry brush to begin with. And increasing the amount of Pallet Witch Flesh in the mix as we go, working our way to lighter and lighter dry brushes so only the tips and most prominent areas of hair are picked up by the time we finish these dry brushing stages. Once we're happy with how the bulk of our hair is looking, we're going to add white scar to the mix in an approximate third to 50% ratio, depending on how bright you want this hair to be, and apply some dot highlights just to the most outer curls and most prominent areas of hair. Once you're happy with how this is looking, we're going to apply a tie together glaze now of Seraphim Sepia, thinned down with a significant amount of Lamia Medium. This is just tie together all the dry brushing layers and give a really natural golden look to Goldberry's hair. Beautiful dress. Considering how complex our base layer was for the dress, we're actually going to be using one extra paint to do the bulk of the work for us on the, uh, the dress itself. To start off with, however, we're going to increase the amount of Baharoth Blue in the base coat mix and apply this as an all over layer in a couple of thin coats again to get a nice even finish and even the base coat layer showing in some of the more pronounced recesses and folds in the material. We're now going to apply a targeted shade with a 50-50 mix of Baharoth Blue and Thousand Suns Blue diluted down with Lamia Medium. We'll apply this as a targeted manual shade to the deepest recesses that we left showing from the previous layer, just to further push the initial definition of the dress. And we're going to tone down the blue and enunciate the shade just a little bit more by applying a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade to the whole dress being careful not to let it pool on more of the flatter and smoother areas and letting the recesses take the bulk of it. Now the time consuming bit. We're going to start adding white scar to the mix we used before our manual shade and our targeted wash and start blocking in the larger areas of material on the dress, leaving the recesses showing the wash and the manual shade and hopefully getting a nice progression from the darker blues to a really nice ethereal washed out almost baby blue that we're trying to get for Goldberry's dress.
Despite the lack of definition at the top half of the dress, the paint will cover really well here and it's quite easy to find out where this layer needs to go to create a nice sense of depth and flow across the material. Continue adding white scar in small increments until we're working with a mix that is approximately 50% white scar and 50% the previous layer mix we used before all the shading. At each stage work on building the highlights up to create a nice gradual progression between the darker blues and the lighter blues we're working with now. By the time we reach the final highlight stage your paint should look almost white with a very faint blue tinge. You really want that ghostly, ethereal, majestic uh, look for Goldbridge to shine through in the finished product. And you can continue adding as much white scar as you want in the mix until you've got uh, little enough pigment that you're happy for the final edge highlight. We'll be very careful then not to overblow it and wash out all the blue, because once you do that we start losing a lot of the character in the model. So it's a careful balance based on where you want your highlights to start and end and how much white scar you actually want to add to the mix. But at this point it's purely up to personal preference. you're happy with how your dress is looking overall, we can apply a glaze now with Drakenhof Nightshade just to tie all these layers together and if you can avoid all the pooling you'll have a really lovely natural look to Goldberry's long flowing blue dress. Metals We're going to be using quite a burnished washed out look for the goals because it will complement the hues of the dress really nicely. To start off with, we're going to base coat the necklace, the neckline of the dress and the gold belt that hangs around her waist with Rhinox Hide. This will give the gold a really nice surface to which to work off and hopefully give the best shine when we're finished. And I'm going to carefully layer over the gold areas now with a 50-50 mix of Retributor Armour and Rune Lord Brass. Being careful not to bleed over onto either the finished dress or the flesh of her neck. Then going to apply a targeted wash with Agrax Earth Shade, thin down a little bit of Lamy Medium to all these gold areas. Again, being very careful to avoid any bleeding over. To try and give a more burnished look to the gold, we're going to apply a further targeted wash with some Druti Violet. Now we can start highlighting the belt and all the gold areas now with Canoptech Alloy, which will just further reinforce the burnished, washed out gold look we want to strive for. And then we can apply a final dot highlight to all the gold areas now with a 50 50 mix of Canoptech Alloy and Stormhose Silver, just to make them pop a little bit more. If you're happy with how this looks, we can apply a light glaze now with Seraphim Sepia just to tile the gold together and bring a little bit more warmth back to the underlying areas of it. Now we're going to very carefully pick up the candle tray with Iron Hand Steel. And apply a very quick targeted shade now with non oil. I'm 
And finally, very carefully picking up the rim and the ring loop now with Stormhost Silver. And that's all the metal work on Goldberry done. Nice and easy. Finishing details. These are the paints and shades we're going to be using to paint the candle and the flame itself. Using mainly glazes and shades for the look of the flame and some nice beiges for the hue of the candle. To start off with, we're going to base coat the main bulk of the candle with a 50 50 mix of Rakarth flesh and Ushabti bone. Mouth place on a couple of thin down layers to get a nice smooth finish across the whole candle. I'm going to layer in now by adding some white scar and an approximate 1 to 2 ratio of mix between white scar and the previous base coat mix and pick out the outside of the candle and define some more of the melted wax dripping over the top. Flipping the ratio of white scar and the previous layer mix now for the next highlight stage just to add a little bit more definition to the outside of the candle. Finally, we're going to pick up the flame itself with Pure white scar, ready for the shades in a minute. Now onto the fire. We're going to keep this fairly basic because there's not a great deal of fire on Goldberry, but to start off with, we're going to shade the base of the candle flame with Fuegan Orange over the white we painted earlier. We can then start working up the flame effect by applying Wazdaka to the raised areas. The fire is hottest at its core, so we want the Fuegan Orange to be hot, to be more prominent in the recesses, and the red working up the outside of the flame. As you're happy with how it's looking, we apply a couple of glazes of Lamentus Yellow to the candle flame itself and to the top of the candle to give a little bit of OSL. Finally, we're going to pick out Goldberry's boots now with a base coat of Dryad Bark. followed by a very quick edge highlight of Gawthor Brown just to finish her off. And here we have the beautiful and majestic finished Goldberry. Alongside the mysterious Tom Bombadil, ready to come to the aid of any hobbits who happen across the barrows and the evil spirits that lurk within. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Apologies again for the quality of recording. We are on the road to recovery and we'll be uh, able to talk a bit better next time. Uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps push the content out. And don't forget to hit that bell for notifications of when we post our next videos. But until next time, guys, we hope you enjoyed. And as always, happy hobbying.